Is our super simple beer ready yet? I certainly hope so, because after three days, that airlock stopped activity completely. Today is seven days in, okay? Uh, we started this on the 11th, today's the 18th, so it's day seven. I wanted to rack this after three days, just so we could say, we racked this beer for three days and it was done, but we didn't have an opportunity. So we're gonna do it today, and we'll just say it was after three days. But anyways, the first thing I wanna do is take a reading on this to make sure it's actually done. I'm fairly certain it is that airlock was totally showing neutral pressure and everything like that. So it's probably degassed already too. Um, been having problems with the master baster. It's really starting to irritate me, making a mess every time, dripping all over the place. So I ordered some of those big plastic syringes, 100 mil syringes with tubing attached. And the link for those will be ready once I try it out, because I want to make sure that it's a good product before we start promoting people buying it but I do have a glass wine thief. Now here's the problem. It's roughly the same size as my cylinder, but it's like a third the volume. So it's gonna take a while to fill up. Bear with me, I'm probably gonna cut it out so you don't have to watch. So in case anyone's curious why I don't just use a wine thief all the time, I have a larger one too that doesn't actually fit in the necks of these fermenters. The problem I have with a wine thief is you have to put it pretty far in to get a big sample and I mean, it's great. I can hold that sample. Look at that. It's barely dripping. But I don't want to go all the way into the lease with it. You have to wait for it to fill up. I can't see through this beer, so I don't know when it's full or not. And that was the fourth sample pulled out of this beer. This will now be the fifth sample pulled out of this beer. It's just a lot. So the syringe is suction, much like a baster would be. And that allows you to skim just right on the surface. And we're floating. Okay, cool. Plus, it's not glass. I don't like, I mean, I love glass versus plastic. But for things like that that are very fragile, they're a little terrifying because it just, I worry about it. Um, anyway, so let's just see what our final reading is here. I'm not expecting this to go totally dry because beer almost rarely does. There's always some amount of non-fermentable sugars. Now, I was wondering if extracts did that too, and it seems that they do. We are at one point, whoop, caught a bubble. It's actually 1.008. So that's pretty good. Let's uh, calculate our ABV before we go any further. And to do that, I'm actually going to use my reference, which is 135, even though this is a lower gravity, just because that's what I always use. What point you use really isn't that critical, as long as you use the same one all the time. So this started at 1.030. So this is a low gravity beer, minus 1.008 gives us 0.022 times 135. You can use 131.25 if you prefer. You're going to get a slightly lower number it's not going to be that different. I mean, we're talking like tenths of a percentage. Um, and honestly, was it 1.008, 1.007, 1.009? Did the foam make it go two more points? That's how imprecise home brewing can actually be. So that is 2.97% ABV, but we are going to carbonate this. That generally gives about 0.4%. So plus 0.4% gives us a 3.37, I'll call it 3.3% ABV. To me, that's a nice light drinking beer for summertime when you just feel like having a beer but you don't want to get sloshed. Anyway, I'm going to take this and pour it into my pitcher. And you might be wondering why I didn't just pour it right back in there. Well, because if I do, I could upset all that lease. So I'm pouring it into a pitcher. Because what we're going to do is put it into the pitcher, then we're going to degas if necessary, and we're going to add our carbonation, um, you know, the sugar for carbonation. But more on that in a minute. Let's rack. Racking, same as always, it, we're going to use an auto siphon with some tubing on the end, and it's just moving it from one vessel to another. If you don't have an auto siphon, try to get one. They make it really, really convenient and really, really simple. But if you absolutely cannot, get yourself some rubber or vinyl tubing, food grade, please. And worst case scenario, just fill it with liquid, hold, cap both ends with your thumbs, put one in here, put one in there, and open it up and it will cause a siphon. Please don't put your mouth on the tubing. Adding germs at this point, especially to a beer or low gravity thing like this, you're just asking for trouble. So we left our end cap on because if you can see down here, our lease comes up to this point. Yeah, it's so kind of high. We don't really want to get any of that in here or that would ruin the whole effect of racking. 
Yeah, that's the idea, is you want to keep that lease in the jar and get the liquid out. You could bottle straight from here. However, if you're going to carbonate, I don't suggest it because you want to mix sugar in. Now, a lot of people will mix the sugar or carbonation drops or whatever right in the bottle. I don't recommend doing that either. And here's why. It's very, very hard to measure minute amounts of things. So we're going to use like eight to 10 bottles for this. For me to take that one ounce of sugar that I'm going to use and break that down to 10 and make it exactly perfect for each one is really hard to do. It's much easier to measure out one ounce, put it in the whole volume, and then divvy that out to the bottles. So that's why we have the intermediary rack to a pitcher first. It also tells me how many ounces we have so we can calculate exactly how many bottles we need. All right, and when you do it right, you get all the way to the bottom. I didn't get any lease up in the tubing, and there's hardly any waste, as you can see. Maybe an ounce or two, just not enough to worry about. Obviously, if you make larger batches, you can totally have basically the same amount of waste, so that way, percentage-wise, you're actually saving more product. Okay, so we ended up with like 116 ounces, which, according to... The little computer sitting on our table that I'm not going to say the name of because then it sets everybody's things off. <laughs> and I can just put that right here. Um, we should get 7.25 bottles at 16 ounces out of that. Now, I know that when I fill these bottles, I tend to put a little bit more in each one than the 16 ounces. So I'm really not worried. It's going to be like seven bottles. Now, I'll probably eat my words later when it's more or less. But hey, you know what? This is the way we do things. But the first thing I want to do is add carbonation fermentation to this liquid. Now, f actually, the very first thing I want to do is see if it needs degassing. And I don't think so. There's there's like barely any gases in here. And you might be wondering, if I'm going to carbonate it, why would I degas it? Well, fermentation gases, oh, there's a little, there's a little. So I'll degas this out while I explain. Um, the gases produced during fermentation, especially in the very beginning, tend to be more sulfurous and bitter, and they don't taste very good. Now, the, you might think, but you're doing another fermentation to carbonate. Yes, you are. And it sounds kind of like a little bit of a weird conundrum, and it's the same thing. But it's actually not. It's a very, very mild fermentation for carbonation. So it's not as likely to cause weird flavors in the gases. It's more CO2 just for bubbles. There's just not as much of it in there. So it doesn't trap bad flavors quite as easily. Hopefully that made sense. Someone can probably explain it better than I did. So we are gonna be adding sugar to our beer to help the yeast create that little micro fermentation for carbonation. And to do that, we had to measure a very small and a very exact amount of sugar. So you've seen our normal scale that we use that weighs large volumes. Yep, well, but it's doesn't... not super precise down to the ounce, you might say. So I got this one, which I love. You want to just try stirring this a little bit? Oh, it's a... Uh... Look at that, you open it up and it's got the little scale here. We do have links to this below. This thing is accurate. I think it's down to like a hundredth of a gram. So it's super accurate. And I weighed out one ounce using this. This is what I use a lot of times when I'm weighing smaller amounts like that. Now, there's lots of ways to carbonate, okay? People use corn sugar. They use all different kinds of things, carbonation drops, things like that. I'm using regular white sugar. I've always used regular white sugar. Why? Because it's convenient. It's easy to get, and this is supposed to be a super simple beer that nearly anybody could make. So I don't want you to have to go buy a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Just use sugar. It works just fine. This is not fully degassed yet. There's foam on top. I'm going to add the sugar in, though, and I'll mix it while I'm degassing. You know, kill two birds, one stone, that kind of thing. And uh, just dump it in unceremoniously. You want to make sure you mix it up real good, though. Otherwise, the last bottles you put in will have more sugar than the others, and that could be bad. The reason you want equal amounts in each bottle, and you want it to be a measured amount, is because due to the fact that it is a small fermentation, it is producing gases. That's what makes the carbonation and the bubbles. But they also create pressure. And while well, those bottles can only hold so much. So if there's more than the right amount by too much, those bottles can explode and do what we call a bottle bomb. It's not really something you want to experience. Um, I've seen the aftermath of them. I've seen pictures. I've heard stories. I've seen people with chunks of glass sticking out of their arm. 
but I've never actually experienced one ourselves, probably because we use this method. The only people I've ever heard of that had bottle bombs were the ones that added the fermentation, like sugar or whatever, directly to the bottle. That's why I don't recommend doing that. It's so much easier to measure one ounce than to try to say, okay, that would be 4.2 grams per bottle. That's hard to do, even with a really good scale, because even going to six grams is pro possibly too much. Going to only three grams might not be enough. So you want to be really careful and be as precise as you can when it comes to that aspect. Speaking of degassing, just a quick word on it. This is all I'm doing. I'm just stirring it one direction, then I'll turn the spoon and go the other way. There are a zillion ways to degas. Okay, you can use vacuum pumps and all kinds of stuff. People will use a drill bit on, that has a thing on the end. For this volume and an open pitcher like this, I find this to be the safest method because I'm not really introducing oxygen. I'm being very careful. It's kind of a Zen moment. You know, you just stir it a few ways and then you stop and go back and yeah, you good. don't want to slosh around because right. that will oxygenate the brew. And at this point, particularly at this low ABV, that is a bad idea. That. I just want to get most of the gases out. You know, I'm not going to get super crazy about it, but I still see some foam coming up. I've been at this for probably five minutes or so. Um, yeah, there are quicker ways, of course, but this is super simple. Everybody's got a spoon, I bet. So it's really easy to do. We did sanitize everything, by the way, just to make sure that you understand that. This is a spoon that we use for cooking, but it is sanitized today, so it's, it's perfect for this. It's silicone, too. All right, I'm going to say that's enough. You can I can fully degas it if I really wanted to, but mm, got most of the gases out, so it's probably going to be just fine. Now we're ready for bottling. And bottling, again, we use our auto siphon, just like before. Because there's no lease in the bottom, I'm going to remove the cap. We're also going to attach our bottling wand to our auto siphon. Bottling wand, stem valve. Liquid flows, liquid stops. Liquid flows, liquid stops. Works wonderful in the bottles. Saves a lot of mess. Don't put it on too far or, you know, it gets hard to remove later. But put it on far, far enough. Far enough that it does. <laughs> We've had that happen. Time or two. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> If you've never seen us bottle before, we're basically just filling up to about there and then pulling the bottling wand out, going into the next bottle. All right, so we have our seven bottles and there was just a little tiny bit left, like, I don't know, two ounces or so. So I was right. We do fill these just a little bit more than the 16 ounce mark, but I thought, don't waste it. Let's give it a try. It certainly smells like beer, which, you know, as to be expected, it is beer. Now, this is non-carbonated and non-chilled, so I'm curious. It's very nice. Yeah. It's actually really nice, even non-carbonated. It's not, I mean, it's a it's a lower ABV beer, not a lot of um, extra, ad, there's no adjunct malts, just the basic LME. Wow, this actually is not bad at all. Yep, with some carbonation, it's going to be a perfectly fine beer. So these will sit for anywhere from one to three weeks. It can take some time, but they are totally safe to sit as long as you want, okay? Because we did control how much got put in there. We put them in a big plastic thick walled tote that we got from Lowe's. We call it the, well, I call it the bomb shelter. And that way, if anything untoward was to happen, it's not going to destroy our house, hurt our cats, hurt us, anything like that. Um, worst case, it'll blow up another bottle when it hits it. But these are just going to go sit in there for a while, and we'll be back with a tasting once they are ready. But in the meantime, if you like this video, look up. There's another video up there. You might like that one, too.